Well, you know, my life motto is have dessert first because you never know. So I am making <laughs> a tiramisu cocktail and there is a lot going on here. Okay. I love that tray coming into view. <laughs> yeah, it's <just> like surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Chemist in the Kitchen, all ye cheese heads and curd nerds. Today's session is about cheese. Now, a lot of you might think about cheese in terms of your Stiltons, your Brie's, your Cheddar's. Today, we're going to be talking about the first part about that, which is where we're going to be separating out the curds from the liquid whey that you find in milk. My name is Sudi Bagarwala. I'm a synthetic biologist at Ginkgo Bioworks. My name is Rachel Burks. I'm a forensic analytical chemist and professor at American University in Washington, DC. Hi, I'm Joan Walker, and I'm a conservation scientist. I study the chemistry of artist materials and works of art to help understand and preserve our cultural heritage. And I'm based in Washington, DC. Of course, I love cheese. It's one of the great joys of milk. And for people who are lactose intolerant, I really, really apologize for that. <laughs> but when you look at a, uh, at a block of cheese or a hunk of cheese, there's all these microorganisms in there that are eating and producing these wonderful flavors and fragrances in there. And that's one of the things that I find especially interesting. So I also love cheese. I'm a vegetarian, so many cheeses are still appropriate for um, me to eat. But I know and love a lot of vegans. Something that's really um, come to the forefront in the past few years is the development of plant-based cheeses. And so that was something I kind of wanted to think about and explore in this episode about how we can make, you know, cheese for everybody. I am going to be making a whole milk ricotta. And I am going to be making a macadamia nut. Ricotta. I will be doing a tiramisu cocktail. Lots of ingredients. Just to quickly go through them, we've got some chocolate bitters, so I'm going to have those in. Some creme de cacao. Actually, a Spanish liqueur, which is really kind of becoming more and more popular, which is liqueur 43. So it's got all kinds of spices, but this is really going to give you that bit of vanilla bit of cinnamon. And then I really like Nocino, which is kind of a classic walnut liqueur, the kind of the nuttiness of coffee that we're really trying to dial up. And I made my home, my own homemade coffee liqueur. Get some, some whole beans, crack them, soak them in brandy, add a little bit of sugar, it's quite nice. And then adding in kind of an ingredient that you don't see, right, in a lot of cocktails, which is the, the mascarpone cheese. What I realized in doing a bit of research is it is pretty similar to ricotta. Your goal is that you're making ricotta, and I know that Joan, you're making a, a nut-based ricotta, and I think that a key difference between mascarpone and ricotta is mascarpone uses a heavy cream, and you're using whole milk? Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna be using whole milk. When you look at a glass of milk, what you're actually looking at is a bunch of tiny particles that are in suspension, so Water is a liquid, milk is a liquid too, but it's got tiny bits of it. In fact, that those bits are the white that you see in, see in the milk. But the interesting thing about, uh, about all the cheeses that we're making is that in order to get the solids out of the, out of the milk, to get the curds out of the whey, you need to find a way to crash that white out of the milk um, into a solid puck, and then you're left with you're left with the liquid. That's complicated, and that requires chemistry, which is why we thought this would be a really cool episode for Chemists in the Kitchen. So the way that I'm going to be doing it today is I'm going to be adding lemon juice, lemon juice, uh, to my milk, which I'm heating up. And as any good biologist and chemist would be able to tell you, that the way to denature proteins or to unfold proteins is through heat, through pH or acid or through salt. So we're gonna be using two of those. We're gonna be using heat, so I've turned my oven on and warming up, warming up the milk. And we're gonna be changing the pH um, by using uh, lemon juice. I'm actually also going to be taking a protein-rich liquid. So it's got these protein macromolecules um, in uh, suspension and going to use a sim similar kind of changing the environment around those proteins to help it crash out of solution. And I'll be using um, citric acid, which is the same acid as you find in lemon juice, um, and also salt. So Sadeep said if you change the amount of salt or the ionic strength around a protein, it will also change its structure. Um, but I'm kind of, instead of using milk and milk proteins, I'm going to be using um, the macromolecules that are found in macadamia nuts. And so this, I'm kind of having to take something that's already a concentrated, you know, 
nutrition powerhouse and I'm going to physically break it up just by um, using a blender. So that way I have access to those molecules in suspension and then we'll add the um, salt and acid and help them to reconfigure into a ricotta like you know creamy cheesy kind of substance. We call them the same thing. You're making a nut milk out of macadamia nuts. I'm using cow milk from, from a cow. Right. I, if you think about just chemically what's going on, right, you have proteins and fat and carbohydrates. And yeah, they're different chemically, but they still are the same classes of molecules. And so they act in similar ways when you change the environments and you want to do reactions with them. These types of molecules tend to behave in the same ways. So I've added in all of the other bits, but I think now is the time to add in the most important bit which is the mascarpone. So this recipe, and there's tons of great tiramisu cocktail recipes out there. Uh, most of them actually don't use one of the hallmark features of tiramisu, which is the mascarpone. They're trying to flim flam you with whipped topping, friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, but no, so this one just calls, they, they say a teaspoon. I might be a little bit over generous. <laughs> And then I'm going to do what is called a dry shake, which just means you're going to shake the heck out of it uh, with no ice. And then I'm going to shake it with ice. Now, Joan, what made you pick the nut that you did? Is there a particular nuts that we should pick and ones that we should maybe skip when we try to make this sure. at Sure. So yeah, I mean, I think there's a couple different um, reasons why macadamia nuts make a good um, choice for this kind of application. But macadamia nuts have a really high fat content. And so they have this really creamy sort of texture, right? Like they're lovely. Um, yes. and, and so they have this really nice creamy mouthfeel because they have long chain mono unsaturated fats in them. So I, I do want to point out the drink is poured and it, I, I, I don't think, know if the camera is doing it justice, but it's beautiful and it's got a nice little foam it's cap. Oh yeah, right? it looks really foamy and creamy. And beautiful. So I've got some chocolate dusting and the best of tiramisu, a little bit of dusting to put kind of right on top, a little bit of Fancy. a garnish. And I mean, it looks delightful. It smells great. <laughs> I, wish, yes. I wish I could share this with you, Lizzy. <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so myself, this is very nice. <laughs> so I have heated up milk in my little saucer. What you can see has happened is that the milk has already started. You can see the layer where it was, where it started off, and it's come down a little bit. So that's nice because it's already starting to evaporate out some of the water and um, we're concentrating down some of the proteins. In the cold, those proteins are going to be fa fairly steady and fairly stiff. But now that we've heated everything up, they're going to be a little wobbly until I add this thing, which is the lemon juice. Lemon juice! And very, very slowly, you can always start to see it happening at the top. In that heat, I'm going to be destabilizing those proteins more and more. There's going to be a very crisp point where the clumps of proteins are going to fall to the bottom and I'm going to have this liquid layer. Um, and I'm going to strain that in my colander. Um, and on the bottom, you're going to see the whey come out. And on the top, you're going to see the curds. So I am actually not going to be using heat. I'm just, as I mentioned, going to be using a blender to make my macadamia nut milk. And I'm going to just go ahead and add in just a little bit of citric acid and a little bit of the salt which will add flavor and also um, act to help clump up our proteins. So I've um, taken my milk with my acid and salt in there and I'm doing a very similar procedure again to uh, Sadiq where I've got my um, expertly, my expert gravity filtration setup. <laughs> that's what this is. Um, is I've got my colander with a paper it. towel and I'm draining out the, the um, liquid part and that's probably going to take quite a while to, to drain. The solid that eventually collects in this strainer will be the ricotta. At the end of all this process, these two things shown together made up that glass of milk. Uh, you know, when Little Miss, Muffet, Little Miss Muffet is sitting on her tuffet eating her curds and whey, this is the whey, but these are the, these are the curds. And there's many ways to make those curds. We've done one of them. And if you're brave enough to 
add your favorite bacteria and fungus to this and ferment it for even longer, you're gonna end up with one of these spectacular bricks of cheese. How's the how are your how are your curds of the way coming, Jen? Um they're they're coming along. I think it's gonna be a little bit of a slow process, but I think that's okay. I mean, you've got kind of this very thick sort of oh yeah that's like can't, yeah 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 so this well you could done. definitely that's awesome definitely you could easily put that with you know layer that with some you know lasagna noodles and some tomato Ooh. sauce and you'd be all right wonderful so. so today we found chemical methods of separating up the curds from the whey in a glass of in a glass of milk and the curds are what's going to be the ricotta on top of the mac and cheese for my kids dinner tonight and we've also learned how it doesn't matter whether those proteins came from an animal or from a plant, in this case a nut, we can do the same kind of chemistry for them. And I learned, don't be afraid to add cheese to booze because it's delicious. <laughs> I hope you've all enjoyed our episode about when good proteins in solution go bad. <laughs>